capsule, an American-built capsule, su has successfully docked with the International Space Station. That moment it took off, we were broadcasting and we showed it live. Crew no, no longer sending commands, every Dragon doing everything on its own. Self capture confirmed. Well, that was the moment it docked. The unmanned SpaceX Dragon capsule will stay there until Friday uh, before dropping down to Earth. And if approved by NASA, it could be carrying people into space as soon as July. Let's talk to Dr Ken Kramer, who's a research scientist and space journalist who joins us from Florida now. Good morning to you. Um, thank you very much for talking to us. Um, I've just got to ask, have you been as excited this weekend as I, I can tell you so many of us were while watching that? Oh, yes, super excited. This is the most exciting launch we've had, really, since the uh, retirement of the shuttle. I'm very happy you were carrying it live. Um, I was watching it live on the roof of the VAB, you know, where we put the shuttles and the Apollo moon rockets together. So we, a, a spectacular view. It was clear. We saw it for many, many minutes. It was just a wonderful thing. Fantastic. You know, and why is so much attention being drawn to this Three, now? Two. Well, there's so much attention because we haven't launched humans from the from the United States since 2011, since the very premature and poor, sh poor uh, short-sighted uh, shutdown of the shuttle. So we've been totally dependent on the Russians. Now we're on the cusp of restoring human space flight to the United States. And with that, we'll also be able to bring our partners from Europe, like ESA, like your astronaut Tim Peake. He could fly on the shuttle instead of having to rely on the Soyuz. So has this only been able to be done because of the commercialization of this? Well, it's it that's part of it, yeah, because the, the shuttle was shut down. So about eight years ago, NASA started the commercial crew program to replace the shuttle. It replaces launching humans. The cargo part that the shuttle used to do is now done by the unmanned cargo vessels. So yeah, now it's after many years of delays because of funding cutbacks and technical difficulties where we're right on the verge of launching humans. We had to do this test flight first to make sure it's safe. And so far, with the docking this morning, a few hours ago, everything looks great. And if it all continues to go well with, with the return, then hopefully we're going to launch those first astronauts, the first two. We met them at the at the briefing I was at with, with Elon Musk just about 24 hours ago. And they're ready to go. They're fully trained. All that we need to do is have a successful flight here. Well, it's interesting you mentioned Elon Musk. I know you managed to get a question into him at the briefing um, over the weekend. Yes. I mean, with the commercialization does come characters like Elon Musk, who's, who's been seen as, as well as pioneering, as very controversial as well. This, I suppose, is the quid pro quo of it all. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's kind of like the way it is. But we've got to have a visionary or we go nowhere. And the politicians have done a very poor job. You know, they've strangled the space program and they've strangled science. And the only way we can advance as a species is we invest in science and technology and innovation. And that's what we need to do. So having people like Elon Musk out there is a driver. We need that because we and we need science because we've got to move forward. We got to work together as humanity for the uh, uh, we got to work together for the betterment of humanity. That's what space and science is all about. So what next? What's the time frame now? If this is successful, we've got it coming back down to Earth, I think, later this week, haven't we? Um, if this is deemed yes. successful, when do we see the likes of Tim Peake, other astronauts, using this capsule? Well, this, this test flight will probably be July, August time frame. I asked the VP, Hans Koenigsmann, about this of uh, SpaceX a few days ago, and he said that the, tight, the timeline is tight for July. They've got to make a few improvements and changes and upgrades between now, depending on what they find out. So that fly will happen in around July, August. After that will come the real operational missions, and that's when Tim Peake could potentially fly or other European astronauts. That'll be a few months down the road. Right now, there's two NASA astronauts on that flight, but they're going to add two international astronauts. They could be from Canada, they could be from uh, Europe, they could be from uh, Japan. The, that's, that's what's going to happen. So the crew is going to be enlarged starting early next year if all goes well. And then that'll continue in the future. It'll be a real international program. 
Ken, thank you so much. Your enthusiasm for this is infectious, but I will also say, you know how we think about what we're wearing? We've got to note the shirt, haven't we? I mean, thought about what he was classy. wearing today for work. Yes, and it's, yes, it's yes. What is that? Is that the Milky Way on that shirt? Um, it, it's, it's, it's the planets and the Milky Way, and it was made by a friend of mine. She used to work on the space shuttle on the thermal protection system that kept the astronauts alive and thermal protection that's going to keep these astronauts alive too. So, yeah, I love space. I do outreach about space. I give lectures about space for <laughs> and anybody you wear who's it. interested. And, I, and I've worked with the BBC, too. Oh, I, I guess I know. I create Oprah images with your Jonathan Amos. I've worked with him. Curiosity, opportunity, and spirit. So, yeah, I do everything. Ah, Humans and robots. And you wear great shirts, too. Ken, thanks so much for talking That's to us. That's a great us. skill to be it's able fabulous. to make a shirt, too, isn't it? Um, not that he made better. Ken, thank you for everything brilliant uh 6 48 you're watching breakfast from bbc news time for the headlines right now an urgent meeting of police chiefs has been called after two more teenagers were killed in fatal stabbings over the weekend